Welcome back to Ecstaticism, Embracing the Journey to Awakening, and I am so enjoying my conversation with Marianne Rada. We left off talking about Sagittarius. Uh, so I had mentioned that uh, I had read from uh, the Palladian channel that she'd had here, and uh, Sagittarius rising soon will be, and I feel that this could possibly be uh, an indication of the right now. And Sagittarius, which uh, the constellation is the archer, is uh, pointing his arrow directly to the galactic center. And with the galactic alignment of December 21st of 2012, uh, you know, the the Earth was directly over the galactic center. So, yeah, uh, what do you feel about that, Marianne? Um, well, I think it's inevitable that it's going to happen. It would be nice if, if everything came together so beautifully. Mm-hmm, um, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like I was saying, I, I'm Sagittarius rising, and my son's Sagittarius rising. My dad was Sagittarius. I have a lot of this um, this impulse of Sagittarius in my life anyway, so uh, I, I can definitely tune into that. Um, Sagittarius wants to know. Sagittarius wants to um, travel, wants to, wants to get the information, and this information is coming from really far away if we can tune into it, and we can all tune into it. Yeah, and it's like that information coming from the galactic center, more and more light pouring to the planet from the galactic center itself. I, it just, that really sparked me, and I, I was really turned on by that, and was thinking that this is, it's, we can take so much from the right now and these gates and these planetary things that are happening to show us the way everything is, is supported astrologically and through the universe itself. And it's so beautiful to see this. Yeah. Just, I love it. <laughs> I think we're going to be seeing more and more synchronicities and, and we have been, uh, there's no reason for that to, to change that we wouldn't see more synchronicities. Um, and I think with each click of these synchronicities, I think more and more people are, are, are getting it and, and coming to ask some questions. Um, I see it all the time. I see, I see these waves of people that are like, I just, I, I have all these questions and they're questions that they get asked with the, with the awakening process when it when it really kicks in um so i think you know it's inevitable that the as they say the, the pleiadians say that the scales are going to tip and that has um there's a little libra imagery there the scales tipping so that there's a, a critical mass of awakening uh conscious beings but also if you look at the scales of the dragon uh tipping that the the dragon is going to lose the mask of fear that it's been wearing, that we've been looking at, and we've been transfixed by. Yeah, definitely. I don't definitely. know if that makes sense. But well, and it's like, well, Sagittarius is a, is a mythical creature, you know? And I, I'm looking a lot at the archetypes mm-hmm. and how we're embodying these particular archetypes, and we're embodying them to reawaken them and then there's a part of me that says, we're going to put them to death in some way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like honoring them enough because if we're sucked through that wormhole, so to speak, okay, mm-hmm. and we come out on the other side, the constellations are going to be completely different. So we're going to create new archetypes. It's That's not that they can't evolve, but I'd like to see that th- I think they're going to be new. Wouldn't I think it's going to be new. I'd love to see that. Isn't that something? That's one of the theories I'm working around. <laughs> you know, that we're, we're embodying these particular archetypes to reawaken them. We really need to understand that everything that ever was already is. It's like we're, we're repeating things over and over and over again. So let's yeah. reawaken to what these archetypes are here to tell us. It's like we're not getting it, you know, yeah, and then we're going to yeah, let's go through the wormhole and create new ones. Yeah, and and we are we are traveling through space, you know, behind our star, which is traveling through space, uh, in relative to other stars, and the the constellations that we see today are not exactly the same as the ones that our ancestors saw tens of thousands of years ago, by any means. No, not and at the, all. The I ancient, some... ancient archetypes have to be different in some way. So mm-hmm. we're getting shifting focus. The, the things are shifting out of focus and taking on a new. We, maybe we just let our eyes see it, you know? It's already there. Yeah, because I learned when I was in Hawaii for shamanic astrology cosmology that the 
uh, constellations, they take on whatever it is that we perceive them to be. It's mm-hmm. like our perception of them that we reflect to them, that we, and then they're mirroring that back to us in their way, but it's like they become what it is that we project of them, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. I w- <laughs> the, the power of collective belief is so strong. And they, they try, there was a, there was a, there was a, an attempt to uh, put a 13th um, Zodiac symbol in the, in the mix. And that right. didn't really take very well. No, it didn't. Cause it's impossible to unbalance a perfectly balanced wheel. You know, it's like an Ophicus, he's the serpent handler, and he's the hub of the wheel. And he mm-hmm. is the serpent, that, which I believe is the wormhole, that will take us into the new world. Ah, it's like okay, it's right yeah. at the galactic center. Yeah. Yeah, and now I'd like to talk about nine, if I could. Because, yes, please do. Um, this is the source of, um, this, is what, this is what the Pleiadian renegades look at, the League of Light, all of them, they look at they've been teaching me about nine since day one of their, their communication with me, which was before I knew who they were when I was just dabbling with angels and, and whatnot, when I first learned how to do this. Um, and they would just say nine and then give me a message. And the message was so true, whatever it was, it was something short, but nine always preceded it. And I came to, you know, learn through all this writing that I've done with them, that nine is what's divine in everything. And, the easiest way for me to describe what that looks like is if you look at an I Ching diagram with the eight sides and then in the center is a yin yang, right? Mm-hmm. You've seen these. Now the yin yang spins around each other, the dark and the light, but what is it that they're spinning around? There's no designation of that in the diagram, but the I Ching, the, the yin yang is spinning around something and that thing if you if you take the eight sides is the ninth thing that's nine that's the that's the the thing that's beyond a two dimensional representation of something that's multi dimensional that exists in everything and is the the thing that we're traveling towards and through to get to this transformation point it's beautiful it so resonates with everything that i've ever learned the nine dimensions all of it you know, and it's yeah. like three threes and threes, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I love that we can take this information and just, you know, expand upon it mm-hmm. and come up with our own sparks of interest that we can just, you know, dive into. And I think that's so beautiful that you've been doing this with, with the Palladian Renegades and, Anika. So please take the time to tell us how to find out more about your work, how we can find your book. So, Okay, okay great. Um, well, I've gathered all of the blogs that I've created over the years into one hub website, which is called Opalescent 9. That's O-P-A-L-E-S-C-E-N-T 9, N-I-N-E dot com. And there you can find all of the blogs, some writings about the science of nine, which have, they're just in the beginning phases and will be added to. I've just begun an audio library of teachings and there will be some downloads being added to that. I have a community with a forum, profile pages, walls, people communicating with each other, groups talking about all kinds of subjects in resonance with this. And there's a books tab on that on that website where you can find my book Opalescence the Pleiadian Renegade Guide to Divinity which has taken years in development and is kind of the magnum opus that the the renegades had to write with me I also have the book Remembrance Messages for Preparing for Contact which is very lighthearted and witty and Garden of Unknowable Things which is a good book for meditation and reflection on on specific short ideas. And they're all there on that website, available through amazon.com. I also do um, personal readings. 
I was wondering, I wanted you to mention that, that you do do personal readings for people and then they can find how to contact you off mm-hmm. of your website as well. It, I, it, you and I have been friends on Facebook for years. I don't, I don't know how many years, at least mm-hmm. at least three or four years I've, we've been connected on Facebook. So, you know, people can connect with me on Facebook and Marianne as well. And I, I've been a fan of your work. And when I held your book in my hands, Opalescence 9, it was a gift uh, of perfect timing and I am so grateful to have had you here with me today and I want you to come back and uh, we'll talk more about Anika. There was no way we could have uh, you know, really tapped into all that you have to share so I would love for you to come back and be a guest again. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. Thank you so very much and uh, I, I look forward to continually seeing more of, of what the Palladian Renegades are bringing through and Anika bringing through. You have such a, a beautiful way of delivery and you're so lighthearted. You've been an inspiration to me and I just want to thank you so much. Oh, thank you. That's such kind words. And um, I just, everybody just be brave and, and go for it and, and, and let's move into some transformation times. It's really exciting. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. Be love, be peace, be joy, and be ecstatic. Thank you for joining me. Next week, I will have Michael and Cindy Fess with me. So thank you so much. God bless. Thank you again for joining us this week. Please invite us back into your life next Tuesday at 12 noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time for another edition of Ecstaticism, Embracing the Journey to Awakening with Sherry Lynn on the Voice America 7th Wave Channel. Until then, have a wonderful week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the 7th Wave Network. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit 7thWaveNetwork.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management.